to be honest, I've never really liked people. I mean, I like human beings in general. I like the idea of meeting new people and making new friends, but I don't like being judged. I don't like the feeling of not being able to fit in. And I don't like lying awake at night overthinking every embarrassing moment that I've ever had in front of strangers. This one time two years ago, I was eating lunch with a friend on the bleachers of my school gym. When we got up to leave, my foot hooked into a stray backpack strap on the floor and I tripped and face planted in front of my entire school. Everyone within a 50 foot radius turned and looked at me. Nothing was hurt except for my dignity, and in that moment, I wanted everyone to forget that happened. Even more, I wanted everyone to forget about my entire existence. And that got me thinking, what if you forgot everyone you ever met after you turned two years old? You would know your family members and maybe a few childhood friends, but you would remain anonymous to everyone else in the world. And why forget everyone after you turn two? Why not five or even 10? It's because psychologists from Emory University found that two-year-old toddlers already start caring about what others think of them. So before that point, you'd be comfortable being yourself. But as you become older and become more aware of others, you also become more sensitive to other people's thoughts about you. So by the time that you become an adult, you end up conforming to societal norms to fit in on a regular basis. This is evident in the Ash paradigm, in which psychologist Solomon Ash performed a series of experiments on conformity in the 1950s. In these experiments, participants were shown a default line, along with three other lines of different lengths. They were told to choose which of the three options had the same length as the given default line, so in this case, the answer would be option two. But here's the catch. Only one person was a real participant. The others were all paid actors who were told to pick the same wrong answer. Like maybe they would all pick option three. The actors would give their answer first and the actual participant would go along with the majority to choose the obviously wrong choice 75% of the time. Now, even though Ash's findings can't really be directly applied to real-world situations, since in many cases the correct answer isn't as clear as it is in the experiment, many psychologists agree that social conformity has greater prevalence in the real world. And among social conformity, there are three types. The first is compliance, which is conformity at a surface level, also the type that Ash's experiment observed. In compliance, your core beliefs and values don't change, but you might say something that you don't necessarily mean. For instance, if all your friends really want to go to Chipotle for lunch, but you've really been craving some sushi, you might just tell everyone that you want to go to Chipotle too, even if you originally didn't want to. The second type of conformity is identification, which is like mid-level conformity. With identification, you might change your behavior temporarily, not just your opinion, and only in the presence of other people. So for example, if you're going out to eat with your friends who are all vegetarian, you might choose to align with a vegetarian diet just for that meal and avoid complexity when choosing a restaurant. But when you leave the restaurant, you don't remain a vegetarian. Finally, there is internalization, which is the deepest level of conformity. This is when internal beliefs or values change permanently. Like maybe you don't have an opinion on pineapple on pizza, but every single person you know absolutely hates it. And after hearing them complain about it so much, you might just adopt their belief and become a permanent opponent to pineapple on pizza, even though originally you didn't care much about it. But in the case of our what if scenario from the beginning, you would always be anonymous and you wouldn't feel a need to conform. And that means that every decision you make would be entirely your own. So how would you dress? 
if you knew that no one would remember you or what you were wearing? What new skills would you learn if you knew that no one would remember if you were horrible at it? And most importantly, who would you let yourself be if you knew that no one would remember you? Would you be more selfless, perform more acts of kindness for other people, even though they wouldn't know who did them? Or would you take advantage and commit crimes because people wouldn't know who did them? Who would you actually be without society's eyes on you all the time? To answer these questions, particularly that last one, let's take a visit to Enlightenment thinkers. This is Thomas Hobbes. He was a rather pessimistic philosopher. In his famous book, Leviathan, he makes the claim that humans are inherently evil and selfish with no natural moral values, which is why laws and government enforcement are necessary in society. In fact, one of his most famous phrases is bellum omnium contra omnes, which translates to war of all against all. It means that in their natural state, people will compete with each other for resources, and they'll believe that they have a right to everything, regardless of the interests of others. So under Hobbes' theory, without judgment from others for being selfish, people in the what-if scenario would have little to no regard for others' feelings. On the other hand, there's Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who is sort of on neutral ground. He believed that people were born good, but the reason they didn't stay good is because they were corrupted by society. He famously said, man is born free, yet everywhere is in chains. In other words, modern society represses the natural good state of mankind and alters their state of being, causing them to become competitive. And finally, there are more optimistic philosophers like John Locke. Like Rousseau, Locke believed that people were naturally born good. But unlike Rousseau, Locke believed that people would work together to reach a common goal, regardless of societal corruption. In the case of our what-if scenario, don't you think people would be kinder to each other if they didn't hold grudges? Since every time you met someone, it'd be like meeting them again for the first time. So if they had offended you in the past, you wouldn't remember that it was them. Wouldn't you be more willing to cooperate with them? Whereas if you remembered every single person who had ever wronged you, you probably wouldn't be too excited to be nice to them or to spend time with them again. But in the end, all these ideas from Enlightenment thinkers are no more than that. They're still just ideas. Regardless of what these philosophers think, your natural state is really just who you would be by yourself. After I spoke about social conformity, I asked who you would let yourself be if you didn't feel pressure from society to fit in. But now I want to ask, who are you now? And who do you want to be? This scenario, as much as I've mentioned it today, is still just a what if, but it helps you think about the person you would have been if you didn't care about others' perception of you. Like, maybe you identified with Hobbes' viewpoint, and you really felt like you would have taken advantage of others. And that's fine. But if you wanted to, what small action items could you take to change that? Whether it's performing an act of kindness each day, writing a gratitude list, or giving shoutouts to friends, these are all things that you can do if you want to improve yourself. Or... Maybe you're afraid of trying new things and pursuing passions because you don't want other people to make fun of you. I know that's the case for me. When I was younger, I used to do martial arts, but I'm not really gifted athletically <laughs> and I move really slowly, so I was always last in the class. And even though I enjoyed learning how to defend myself and I enjoyed learning how to perform cool moves, I eventually quit because I felt like everyone was judging me for being so slow, even if they weren't. Looking back, I'm not proud of quitting, but I understand why I chose to at the time. So I've shared with you that judgment from others prevents me from expressing myself fully. 
what's stopping you today from being the person that you want to be? Why is it stopping you? And how will you change it? The average adult makes 35,000 decisions a day. That's 35,000 times that you can make decisions influenced by other people's opinions, but also 35,000 chances to make each decision your own. Right now, I'm asking you take, to take one of those chances and make one decision that you'll consciously make every day to be the person that you want to be, not the person that you think you should be. Thank you.